Welcome back to a new Webflow tutorial here on this Formbook channel. I'm pretty sure some of you have already seen this incredible Shopify Winter Edition website that's been all over social media lately. It's a great example of where web design is heading, especially with the combination of AI, creativity and motion. And one thing that really stood out to me right at the beginning here was this navigation transition. It starts centered on the page and then moves to the left and becomes sticky together with the logo as you scroll. And especially that staggered effect where the navigation links slide in one after another with a slight delay really caught my eye. So let's take a closer look how we can recreate something like this using the new GSAP timeline in Webflow. And there are a couple of small tricks you need to keep in mind, but overall this kind of result is actually very achievable. And today's video is completely free to watch, but if you want to copy the full animation setup, you will find the template inside the Webflow project of my new Webflow GSAP Interaction Masterclass. All lessons in the course are now also available in English, and I'm really happy to see so many of you already joining. Inside the course you will learn how to fully master the new GSAP animation tool in Webflow from beginner and all the way up to expert level techniques. We can use a normal Webflow navigation component for this build and I wrapped this one again into another diff element because uh, at the end we want to animate this element here from a fixed width in this case, it's 26 rem to maybe 100% or let's give it some space to the left. So something like 90 or something. And this diff wrapper has also Flexbox vertically center. So we can center the navigation component for the beginning. So let's bring it back to 26 uh, rem. And then this one is also put to position sticky. In this case with 5VH uh, because we have a height here of 90 VH, so it's uh, like in the center. And you can see it's uh, constantly scrolling within the viewport until the main wrapper element here is um, done. So I put the footer outside of the main wrapper in this case, so it's not overlapping the footer element. Then inside we have the navigation component, which is also set to Flexbox vertically, and then stretch the elements to the full width. And we need this Flexbox settings here because we start at a fixed height, but if we increase the height uh, at the end, it will be something like 100%. Then we can um, give the nav link wrapper element here um, a sizing of what is it called a grow if possible. So it's using the available space and also aligning all the child elements here to the bottom. And this is necessary so we can place the navigation links here at the corner at the end. And using a fixed height here for the navigation component is not really the perfect solution, but I, I couldn't figure out another one. So maybe you have um, a better solution and you can leave a comment here below the video. But in this case, you have to adjust this height value accordingly. If you have more navigation points here, then the space wouldn't be enough. And so you have to yeah, increase this one here as well. And lastly, we have the small info text here above the links and the logo link block. Then let's start with the animation. And in this case, we don't use a whole section as our animation trigger because I sometimes like to place another diff element, which is just in this case, um, uh, one pixel height. And I gave it a accent color, background color, so we can see it. And then we can place it position absolute here. When this element is out of the viewport, then the animation or the navigation should be animated to the left. And when it's coming back into the viewport, then all the points are going back to the center. When you do it with a separate trigger element, like uh, in this case, you can decide more precisely when the actual animation should start. And you don't always have to go into the an interaction trigger itself and adjust some percentage values there. In this case, we can also see where the trigger element is and we maybe leave it at two or a little bit less. And then we can go to the interaction and then make a new scroll interaction. I gave it a sticky vertical navigation name and inside of our trigger, we have this diff line here now as a trigger element, which is correct. And then it's important that in the advanced options that you deactivate the clamp start and values because our trigger is directly within the viewport. And then we don't have to adjust any values here. But here at the controls, we don't want to have a scroll animation. We want to trigger some actions we um, define in a second. And then when this element here, this diff line is entering, so it's going back from top into the viewport, 
then we want to actually reverse our, our animation. But when it's leaving the viewport, so when it's out, then we want to play or start our action steps here and the navigation points go in this direction. And when our trigger element is coming back, then you could do the same, reverse, and then play again if it's going out. And for our first action step, we can double click here into the timeline. And this one will be our NAV uh, wrapper element. So this outer element here. And you can see right now the target of this action step is our trigger element, which is this diff line. So this orange line here above, which actually is not the element we want to animate. So we go into the target. And then I have this NAV vertical wrapper here selected and then I can switch to class and it's automatically inserting our NAV vertical wrapper class. In this case, Webflow is um, using the standard filter. So it's within our trigger element, but this element is actually not inside of this diff trigger here. So we can deactivate this and that would mean that it's actually animating all NAV vertical wrapper class elements on the page, but we actually have only one. So this is fine. And then um, we want to animate the width. So let's add this property here um, inside of our action step. Where is it here? The width. And then we want to animate it from where it is to uh, maybe 90%. And you can see that this is now uh, working. But when you animate something from uh, one unit into another one, and in this case, we have, I think, 26 rem as a starting point, and then it's going into the percentage value, then you should also give the from state here directly in GSAP because this will give you a better performance. So we have to write it again here inside the from state. We can remove the other properties because we don't need them now. And then we change the duration here to maybe one second and give it an expo in out here for the easing. And now we can preview our animation here via the play toggle or we can just uh, scroll um, down and back to the top and then the animation is also uh, playing here in the preview. Let's zoom out a little bit. And um, as you can see, now it's stretching the, the navigation to the full width. But as you can see here in the Shopify example, the navigation width here is going a little bit smaller in width. So we can also animate this one. And let's grab the Nufflings list here for this action step. And um, it can actually just duplicate this one, give it another color here, blue. Let's call this one Nuff Links Wrapper. And then let's switch to trigger element and back to class. So it's inserting the, this class name here automatically and then reset the filter here. And then we can also animate it from 26 rem to, um, what was it, maybe 18 rem. So it's getting a little bit um, smaller. So from this um, distance, then the navigation order, just the number points here are going a little bit closer to the link names. Then we also want to animate the height of the NAV component. So let's uh, grab this element here, double click into the timeline. This is again one second here as a duration and a power or expo in out. And then as a target, we can choose class. So it's inserting the NAV component name and reset the filter here. And then we want to animate it from um, height. I think it's also 26 RAM. So let's choose 26 here and then it's going to 100%. Yeah, and then it's the wrapper element around it has, uh, I think 90 VH. So it's not stretching the full height. And now we have the most important part, which is the stagger effect of the navigation links and also making the logo a little bit smaller. But let's start with the links uh, first. And therefore we can um, grab the NAV link list element, which we actually already have here. I think NAV link lists, yeah. But we now don't wanna animate the NAV link list, but all the children inside. So we could uh, duplicate this one and just call this NAV links. And then we switch the target here to any element within and then we can use this class name here again within the Nufflink list. And now you see every one of them is getting this um, little um, animation icon here. But because we chose any element, it's actually animating now every element inside. So also both of these title elements. And that's actually not what you want. We only want the direct children of this link list wrapper element. So that's actually not what we want. So let's choose the NAV link element here, then go back to the target, choose class. So it's inserting the NAV link and then filter it 
we can use a direct child of nav link list. So every direct child of this element is now being animated and no longer those um, yeah, other text elements or other elements inside our link blocks. And we don't want to animate the width here in this case, but only the move them in the X direction. And now we need a starting point. And in this case, I would use VW as a value. And then we move them, all of them, to the right and then back to zero VW. We also use the same duration and easing here for this case. And then of course, we also have to activate the stagger effect here with an offset of maybe 20 milliseconds. So it's now animating every one of them, one after another with 20 milliseconds delay in between. You could also increase this one here to maybe 40. So the effect would be even stronger. But as you can see, the navigation links are no longer starting from the center of the page. So we have to grab the nav links list element, which we already have an action step here, nav link list. So let's maybe choose another name here. And because we cannot see this element outline right now, we can activate this toggle here. And you see, this is still here in the center, but all the links are here on the right side. So what we can do is bring this element in the opposite direction. So we move this one also 40%, but negative. So to the left side and then VW. And then we basically have the wrapper element here in this position, but the links are now back to the center. And then we can move it from there back also to the zero VW position. And now you see why it is important that we use the same duration and easing for every one of these action steps. Because if we now play this one from the beginning, it doesn't feel like the link elements are coming more from the right or the wrapper element here is on, on the left. But if I now make this one here a little bit um, shorter and then maybe also replay this one, then you can see that the timing is now really off. So let's bring this one here back to one second. And then as a last step, we could also animate the logo for, for example. So let's give this one um, a logo name and target this one by, by class reset the filter because we only have one logo on our page. And this one um, should uh, be animating the width from where it is um, to maybe let's bring it back to 15 rem maybe. So let's make this also a little bit smaller with a power or expo in out in one second. So if you toggle on the preview here, you can see that this is actually working pretty smooth. And this is what I really like about the new GSAP interactions. They are super performant. And when I scroll here back and forth, it's not flickering or anything. It's just uh, working. The small detail that you move the navigation links a little bit to the right and then bring them back to the um, zero position. And that's actually uh, doing the trick for this kind of animation.